The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, Breakout Investing, with your host, Ken Shreve. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Breakout Investing on TFNN, now five days a week. My name is Ken Shreve. Thanks very much for uh, tuning in. The number to use is 877-927-6648. Talk about the market live for the next uh, hour or so. And uh, just a reminder, the show airs uh, now five days a week. used to be Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now it is five days a week, 3 to 4 Eastern. Uh, David White, who used to be in this time slot, uh, he, for the rest of this month, is going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 2 to 3 Eastern. And then starting in uh, starting in. Uh, August. He's going to be going five days a week from 2 to 3. Uh, don't forget, if you don't, can't listen to the show live, you can get the uh, Breakout Investing as a podcast on iTunes. So be sure to check that out. And uh, don't forget, you can listen to all TFNN programming on your smartphone. Just type in tfnn.mobi, tfnn.mobi in your smartphone browser, and you can... Listen to the stream that way as well. Uh, Tiger TV on the homepage of TFNN.com. You can look at uh, charts uh, live as I'm doing the show. Tune in to Channel 1, and the show is archived on Channel 13 in Tiger TV. So uh, be sure to check out that great feature. And uh, you can view Tiger TV now in your uh, handheld device uh, as well. Nice, uh, crisp clean picture there, so uh, check that out as well. All right, check it in on the markets here. NASDAQ Composite trading up near its uh, session high, but still sellers around in this market, uh, unfortunately. Uh, not a bad day for the market, not a great day, not a bad day, though. It, um, NASDAQ Composite hit an intraday low of 2837. It is trading up near its session high, so that's a, a positive. It's at uh, 2868 right now. Still down 19 points, uh, almost seven tenths of a percent. And uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens here. We are uh, five days in a row down for the Nasdaq Composite right now. Uh, sellers uh, definitely back in this market after uh, another false step for the market. And yeah, we had that uh, good, uh, powerful buy signal, or at what at the time looked like a uh, powerful. Uh, buy signal. Um, let me just get the date. I should have that right at the tip of my uh, tongue here, but that was uh, June 29th where we saw those big percentage gains for the major averages. Uh, really looked like it uh, It had uh, staying power. We had, uh, you know, days of gains uh, after that, and then boom, just uh, sellers are, are back in this market. A lot of uncertainty out there, a lot of skittishness as we approach uh, second quarter uh, earnings season. And um, a lot of negative pre-announcements too have not been uh, have not been good to see in, in recent days. So uh, next week very very busy. I was going through the earnings calendar um, next week and a lot of high profile tech names uh, scheduled to report: eBay, Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, Intuitive Surgical, Chipotle. So uh, we're going to start to get real busy next week and then even busier the following week. So hopefully there will be some uh, better news on the earnings front as earnings season uh, gets going here. Let's uh, take a look at um, the S&P 500 here. See what the S&P 500 is doing with about 50 minutes left to go in Thursday's session. We'll see that the uh, benchmark index also up near its session high. Fell below its 50-day uh, moving average earlier today. Hit an intraday low of 13.25. It is uh, now trading around 13.37, down uh, close to four points, three tenths of a percent, and uh, up near its session high though. So there are some some buyers around here. Uh, volume today on both exchanges tracking a little bit higher than what we saw on Wednesday. NYSE volume on Wednesday was uh, again below average. We're just in kind of a lackluster. Uh, volume uh, time for the market right now during the summer doldrums. Uh, NYSE volume yesterday at 760 million shares. Right now could come in just a little bit higher than that. Uh, NASDAQ volume on uh, Wednesday was also below average at 1.6 billion shares. Again, NASDAQ volume today on pace to come in uh, slightly higher than what we saw uh, yesterday. Still a very defensive market out there if you've been following growth stocks and um, especially you know people that subscribe to my Ultimate Growth Stocks uh, newsletter. We know that the, the action in 
high growth names has been uh, poor uh, for the mar most part. It's uh, it's a, a defensive market right now. There's no question about it. Let's check in on the uh, the select sector uh, utilities, uh, Spider Fund, XLU. See that this is uh, technically still very strong, working on three straight up days here. It's up another 11 cents today, three tenths of a percent to 37.07. But as you can see by the chart, continues to show relative price strength. Definitely attracting uh, buyer uh, buying interest in a market that is uh, clearly a bit um, a bit unsettled here. Uh, also, money uh, continuing to uh, flow into the uh, bond market here. Here is the uh, TLT. It is working on six straight gains here. Uh, possible breakout taking shape in the TLT. This is the iShares Barclay 20 plus year Treasury bond fund. It is up uh, seven tenths of a percent today to 129.48, and you know flirting with a little. Uh, swing point over here set in uh, late May, uh, early June. So uh, TLT bonds uh, in general continue to attract uh, buying interest. Uh, let's check in on the 10-year uh, note here. That's going to be ticker TNX. TNX. That's going to give us uh, the 10-year note. We'll see the yield uh, right here is, um, well, it looks like it's around 1.48%. 1. 48 thereabouts and the yield on the uh, yield on the 30 year note check in on that real quick and that's uh, rock bottom as well uh, about 2.56 percent so uh, bond prices going up yields going down uh, money coming out of the market uh, kind of difficult uh, times out there uh, yesterday we had the release of the uh, fed minutes again uh, nothing new um, you know, Fed, when it, Fed minutes used to carry much more weight before the Fed was doing these press conferences at the end of their uh, meetings. But um, you know, we know that four Fed officials uh, thought that more asset purchases uh, would be necessary. Uh, several others are saying that more action could be warranted uh, if economic uh, conditions continue to deteriorate. And you know what we've been talking about in recent days? Obviously, a very sluggish uh, jobs market. We did get a pretty decent uh, reading in weekly jobless claims, uh, down 26,000 to 350,000 earlier today. A lot of that had to do with uh, seasonal uh, factor, so uh, that uh, data could just be an uh, anomaly where you could see a, an equally big jump over the next uh, couple of weeks. But uh, good news on the, on the surface uh, that jobless claims are back down to 350,000, but still a lot of uh, challenges uh, left for this uh, economy. I think, again, part of the reason uh, you know, for the weakness in the major averages uh, could be pricing in a, a weaker than expected second quarter earnings season. And uh, don't forget that the Fed has been um, bringing down its uh, forecast for economic growth uh, for the uh, for the rest of this year. Uh, initially, they headed it from 2.4 percent to 2.9 percent. They uh, they moved that down to uh, 1.9 percent to 2.4 percent. And uh, yeah, you know, there seems to be a growing uh, concern that they could even lower it um, further. I believe in the uh, the first quarter, the economy grew at a rate at 1.9 uh, percent. So. If uh, the unemployment picture stays the where it is, stays where it is, or uh, even gets worse, uh, there's um, you know there's reason to think that these uh, GDP uh, estimates could uh, come down uh, even lower. Also, in economic uh, data today, in a separate report, the Labor Department said the price of uh, price index of goods imported into the US fell 2.7% in June mostly due to a, a big uh, drop in uh, oil prices still it was the biggest decline in uh, four years. Coming up uh, tomorrow, we've got the producer price index for June. Overall, price is expected to be down six-tenths of one percent with the core rate up two-tenths of a percent. We'll also get the uh, first reading on uh, consumer confidence uh, for the month of July from the University of Michigan. That is also um, that's also uh, coming up uh, tomorrow. Let's take a look at the uh, U.S. dollar. Why don't we look at the UUP, the Power Shares Deutsche Bank U.S. Dollar Index Bullish uh, Fund. Uh, that is also working on three straight uh, up days. Uh, in fact, up five out of the past, past six uh, trading sessions. A lot of people are a little skeptical of this move in the dollar, and I tend to agree because of just the, the huge move it's made uh, off its um, 
bottom. You can see in, uh, what is that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine trading sessions, it has gone from around uh, 2240 uh, all the way up to 2303. So it's uh, sitting right around uh, a swing point of 2302. That was its high setback over in this area here. But a pretty quick jump uh, move up off the bottom. Wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of softness in the uh, U.S. dollar uh, from here, uh, which, again, softness in the dollar could could help uh, stocks for a little bit here uh, so you know my, my general take on things is even though I'm seeing mostly crummy action in growth stocks in general a lot of stocks consolidating you know still seeing some charts out there that are okay still seeing some stocks out there that that you know can provide uh, leadership but the, the you know the, the common theme here the main underlying message that I've been talking about is that it's still a market where you know most of the buying is being driven by the retail crowd and that's just not enough juice to really get anything going here so until you know I talk about new money coming in from the sidelines I still think it's going to happen uh, at some point between now and the end of the year but it's certainly not happening now and uh, hopefully it will happen soon because that's really the fuel that's needed for a meaningful uh, uptrend to uh, to get going but um, again, the US dollar uh, certainly has been a headwind uh, very strong over the past um, you know, seven, eight, nine uh, trading sessions. It is trying to uh, break out here, but uh, again, it is kind of near at the UUP is down near at session low today after early strength, but um, you know, still up on the day, uh, up five cents to twenty three. Oh, three. Checking in on gold. Why don't we check in on gold? Down ten dollars and forty cents. This is gold bullion, uh, seven tenths of a percent to fifteen sixty-five thirty an ounce. Check in on the liquid GLD, and we'll see that it is down forty-nine cents to one fifty-two fifty. Trading up near its session high after hitting an intraday low of one fifty eighty-five. So. Gold attracting some uh, some buyers here. Still down on the day, down 49 cents, but trading at its uh, session high with about uh, 45 minutes left to go in Thursday's session. Uh, oil today up three tenths of a percent to 86.06 a barrel. So keeping track of higher volume declines in recent days, and when you, when you have a confirmed uptrend, which we got on June 29th, you really want to pay attention to um, you know price and volume trends in the major averages. Um, distribution has been mostly contained. We have two higher volume declines in the NASDAQ and NYSE composite headed into today. Just one for the S&P 500. Look like we could have another one today. <clears throat> And it's still uh, it's still possible, actually, with the Nasdaq's uh, percentage decline right now, we, we could see more distribution in the market uh, today. So we'll have to see what it looks like uh, by the close here. But uh, headwinds are definitely out there. It's a very difficult environment uh, to, to be making money in, in stocks. And um, I don't have any problem just kind of, you know, being conservative here, not uh, not playing a whole lot right now, sitting uh, sitting mostly in uh, in cash here and uh, just uh, content to kind of sit the sit the selling out. I mean, there are going to be times when the market is going to uh, present a lot of different stocks uh, to buy. Uh, there are going to be a dime a dozen. There are going to be times like right now where you're going to see a lot of a um, lot of damage charts, a lot of stocks, um, you know, consolidating gains, taking a breather. Uh, many need more time. But uh, when we come back, we'll talk about some names finding support at their 50-day moving averages. This is positive. Uh, some stocks still uh, hanging in there okay, so we don't completely want to give up on them yet. We'll do that when we come back in about oh, three to four minutes. You're listening to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Just like that, another month has passed and the Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway has come to an end. Each market day in June, one lucky winner was chosen to receive a one-ounce silver bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver and TFNN. We'd like to thank all the listeners that chose to participate, and if you weren't lucky enough to be a winner this time around, be on the lookout in the coming months for another opportunity to win a one-ounce silver bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver and TFNN. Thanks so much and good trading. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you gain access to each host charts and computer screen as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, Dave White, Larry Pesavento, or Victor Jones, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV yet, then visit TFNN.com today to see what you're missing. 
You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. Ken Shreve with you, 877-927-6648. Uh, That's the number to use uh, to get through. Uh, yeah, we're talking about headwinds in this market, uncertainty that's out there. You know, typically when I'm, um, you know, uh, buying stocks for my ultimate growth stocks uh, model portfolio, uh, putting my newsletter together, I, I really want to be focusing my buys during uh, market uptrends. And, you know, I can't completely give up on the buy signal that was seen on June 29th. Uh, clearly, this is a market that is, um, you know, on the ropes here. Uh, we really could go either way, and it seems like just looking at the, the the charts out there, it seems like we we could head lower before we head higher. But I don't want to become too um, too married to a bearish uh, position, especially if the market just completely turns around, which it which it can do. I mean, it's the one of the most volatile markets I've uh, ever been involved uh, with. So. Uh, just because I've been raising cash in my model portfolio doesn't automatically mean I've been going short either uh, because it's very easy to get whipsawed around in uh, in short positions uh, as well. So it's a, just a very difficult market. I uh, don't see anything wrong with just kind of taking it uh, taking it slow here, waiting for the volatility to uh, subside. I do think that at some point uh, we will see signs that new money is coming in from the sidelines. We'll see better leadership and um, 
that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I, I basically, when when uh, you know when when bad charts outnumber good charts by a wide margin, there's a, a message there that I believe should be uh, should be listened to, and it just tells you that the odds really aren't in your favor, at least when it comes to growth stocks. That the odds aren't in our favor now for for making meaningful uh, profits. Now we want to buy a stock on Monday, sell it on Wednesday for a you know four or five percent gain. Yeah, I mean that that that's a possibility, but uh, I really like to focus my buys uh, during optimum market uh, conditions where you know we can hold uh, for a long period of time and, and reap a, a big gain. So uh, right now, defensive stocks uh, totally in control here. Let's check in on shares of uh, Merck. Uh, Merck is a uh, Dow component. Um, Stock's making a big move today. Big gap up for Merck, up a dollar seventy-eight right now, four point three percent to forty-two ninety-nine for uh, Merck. Company ended a late-stage study of an osteoporosis treatment because there was uh, pretty clear evidence of uh, of success. It uh, plans to seek approval for the drug in the first half of 2013. Uh, shares did get an upgrade today. Also, uh, Procter and Gamble, P and G. Also, I uh, believe that's in, in the Dow as well, but Procter & Gamble up uh, huge today, up 4.2% to 6397 story here is that the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, uh, said that uh, William Ackman's Pershing Square Capital Management can buy a stake in the consumer products company. Uh, Pershing Square likes to uh, buy stakes in companies where it believes... Um, you know the, the possibility of uh, assets being spun off in the in the future to create uh, value is there. I uh, remember that Procter and Gamble recently uh, sold its Pringles unit. They have other assets too. I think that uh, Ackman is um, thinking they could uh, spin off to create more value. So uh, that's good news for for P and G today. Stock up big, 4.2 percent uh, to 63. 97. Let's also take a look at uh, Constellation Brands, uh, liquor company here, STZ on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, a big move for the stock today, up 3.8% to 28.68. Stock got a raised price target from UBS. Not a big raise to uh, 33 bucks up to 35, but good day for uh, defensive name Constellation Brands as well. Let's check in on Apple. Uh, Apple's uh, looking looking pretty good here. I recently took profits in Apple for my Ultimate Growth Stocks model portfolio, but this is a name that I could very easily revisit uh, in the future. And you know what? I may revisit it soon if the technical picture of the stock tells me to to buy it. It's not quite ready yet, but what you have going here is a bullish cup with handle pattern for, for Apple. You had the start of the base back here in uh, April. It uh, consolidated gains, hit a low close to about $520 a share back in May. It's been working on the right side of its base here. Really not much volume at all, just kind of you know working its way higher. Obviously some optimism about um, uh, earnings report on July 24th, but uh, what we could see here is the handle area forming of a cup with handle uh, pattern. If Apple breaks out over 620 bucks a share and we see a big surge in trading volume at that breakout, uh, would not be afraid to start a uh, start a new position in, um, in Apple. Interesting today that uh, Charlie Wolf from Needham & Company, he's an analyst, he uh, raised his uh, estimate of iPad sales in the June quarter They're looking for 20 million unit sales for the uh, tablet computer. Uh, Wolf said it's only a matter of time before iPad shipments exceed exceed iPhone shipments. So a lot of people out there thinking that uh, we could see a good quarter from uh, from Apple. Could see a breakout uh, not too distant future for this uh, company, so definitely one to watch. And there are other ones out there, too. We'll uh, talk about them when we come back. You're listening to Breakout Investing on TFNM. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become 
become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, has just launched and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers where she focuses on small cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about technical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, to Breakout Investing on TFN. Before we go to Joe in Boston, let's uh, ch take a quick check on the markets here. Trying to rally into the close here. Um, not too bad a day, but uh, NASDAQ's still down 13.5 points, uh, half a percent to 28.74, well off its uh, lows. The selling pressure pretty muted in the S&P 500. It's only down about two and a half points, two tenths of a percent to 13.39. And the Dow, positive uh, now just by a little bit, up three points to 12,607. And um, been a little while since we heard from Joe in Boston. Always, uh, always brings some interesting stocks to the table, and he's got one uh, here in United Therapeutics, UTHR. How you doing, Joe? Ken, I am doing fantastic. All right. Thanks, oh, good to hear. Good to hear, buddy. Congratulations on the getting the show five days a week. Yeah, five days a week. You know, got plenty, uh, got plenty to to talk about in these uh, in these markets. So um, yeah, I'm happy to do it, and it's a uh, yeah, good deal, no doubt. Good. Um, yeah. So I just you know I've been following this one. Uh, I don't. The question here is, you know, 
I know it's off the highs, but would you consider this a, a base down here? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a base. Uh, taking a look at uh, United uh, Therapeutics and. Um, it's a base because you have a, a, a prior a prior uptrend. Okay, um, you know the, the 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 this this consolidation started uh, back uh, earlier this year in um, yeah, I'll call it February. Uh, yeah, right around February tenth. There are about. Let me go ahead and uh, put a uh, put a weekly chart up here. Moving averages aren't going to be quite right, but we'll just get. Uh, yeah. So just uh, for those watching in Tiger TV, you had your uh, your uptrend here basically from October until February and then you know it kind of fell into a base so it's it's still off its highs but uh, this is a, this is a good base and I would call it a, a cup with handle uh, pattern the uh, the biotech uh, group is still you know very strong in the market I'm, I'm sure you know and this is uh, a stock that uh, garners uh, you know pretty good ratings from the folks over at uh, IBD could be forming a little uh, handle area here with um, you know, resistance is going to be just over, you know, 50, 52, 53 bucks a share thereabouts. So, right. Do you know much yeah. about the, the management team there at all? I don't. You know, I, I know a little bit about the, the, the company. I mean, it just it, it pops up in my screens, and, um, you know, it's, it's definitely a, a high-quality, you know, biotech stock. But uh, I don't know much about the management team. Uh, again, just looking at the, you know, the fundamental metrics that um, – that are important in terms of top line growth, bottom line growth, all that. Uh, yeah, it seems to be a pretty solid company. And basically, when you have return on equity of 24%, uh, which uh, which this company has, uh, it's generally indicative of a of a pretty good uh, management team in place. So uh, yeah. yeah. Well, like, there was a guy I saw on this guy. I don't know. I forget his name. He's like been the ranked the top biotech analyst. Uh huh. For the last like seven years. Yeah, and his three top picks were Merck, which has already made a big move. This yeah. one and Gilead. Yeah, I mean Those it's uh, free, yeah yeah, so. yeah, I, yeah it's uh, you know U U T H R. There's really hard to find uh, anything you know when you, when you have when you have good fundamentals and you have good technicals. You've got the best best of both uh, worlds, and uh, right. you've got pretty good fundamentals here. You've got uh, pretty good technicals as well. The one you know the missing ingredient, but most stocks uh, Joe are suffering from this right now is just kind of a you know a lack of uh, meaningful accumulation. There's just a, kind of a lot of retail buying going on in the market right now. You've probably heard me in recent uh, weeks just talking about a lot of a um, lot of money still on the sidelines uh, United Therapeutics is not really showing you know meaningful uh, hasn't shown meaningful uh, accumulation uh, right. since uh, since it's been rallying uh, for the past f past few weeks it does it's not a negative but um, you know if if this eventually breaks out over 52 53 it would be good to see some you know some uh, some good juice behind yeah, the, like behind one, the move. Yeah, two to three million shares or something like that exactly Okay. So. All right, Ken. Thanks again. All right. Good stock. Thanks, All Joe. Right. Bye. All right, Joe from Bob Boston uh, talking United uh, Therapeutics. Yeah, the the biotech uh, group is, uh, is is pretty pretty strong here, no doubt about it. I uh, said he listened to an influ in influential biotech analyst talking about uh, Merck. We talked about Merck earlier in the in the show. Uh, big day for Merck today. UTH, UTHR was also mentioned, and then Gilead Sciences. Let's take a look at uh, Gilead. Uh, technically not, not as strong as uh, UTHR. Uh, not a fan of Gilead's uh, chart right now, but uh, um, you know, still a, a profitable uh, uh, mostly profitable biotech, uh, Gilead Sciences. They um, uh, they do a lot of uh, work in the HIV uh, field. So, uh, but biotech uh, healthcare in general, biotech uh, still still work here, no question about it. All right, so we uh, we're talking about Apple, uh, good cup with handle base uh, taking uh, shape here. Uh, let's also talk about the home builders. Home builders have been doing well all day today. Um, ITB, this is the iShares Dow Jones U.S. Home Construction Index Fund. Uh, it is up two and a half percent today to 1691. Pretty good performance considering it hit an intraday low of uh, 1626. It is. Up near its uh, session high, some volume uh, behind the uh, the move today. It had lost ground for three straight sessions headed into today, but uh, some decent uh, decent juice behind the the move in ITB today. Top holdings of ITB include uh, uh, Dr. Horton, Lennar, and Toll Brothers. Let's uh, check in on each of them uh, first. DHI. We'll see that it is up 3.3% today to 18.47. Uh, good volume there. Uh, Lennar, 
widely regarded as one of the strongest home builders out there. Good fundamentals. Uh, this one also up near its session high. It's up 4.1% uh, today to 31.22. And finally, uh, Toll Brothers also uh, participating in this home builder rally shares of uh, Toll Brothers up 3.2% to 29.82. So nice outperformance uh, from the home builders today in a generally weak tape. Um, talking about some uh, he other healthcare stocks, kind of another defensive name here, Quest Diagnostics. A big move for Quest Diagnostics today, up 4.3% to 63.41. I wanted to show you a chart of uh, Quest here. And let's see here, Quest. There it is. And what, what I have here is um, a monthly chart. This is a monthly chart of Quest Diagnostics. You should be seeing it now in uh, Tiger TV. And uh, what's interesting here is that you do have a a breakout taking shape from a really, really long base. I mean, this is a monthly chart that goes back, um, you know, five or six years. Five or six years, and you're seeing it finally breaking out. Um, of a long, long base. So this is a compelling price action in Quest uh, Quest Diagnostics uh, today. Um, it's it's a good company. You know, it's it's a good company. It's uh, definitely under some accumulation. Huge volume in the stock uh, today. Um, the issue I have is is when I'm looking at stocks, I really like to see robust uh, growth in recent quarters. And what you have at uh, Quest in terms of top line growth, you know, you're looking at. Um, 2%, 3%, 6% growth in, in recent uh, quarters, at least when it comes to uh, sales growth. Uh, not terrible, but I really like to, to see big, um, you know, big firepower when it comes to quarterly earnings and sales growth. And uh, this, this company doesn't have it. doesn't make it a bad company. doesn't make it a bad stock. Uh, I just have kind of strict criteria that I use when I'm evaluating a stock from a fundamental perspective. really like to see uh, strong earnings and sales growth in recent quarters. Uh, Quest has been a consistent grower, but just doesn't grow at the rate uh, that I like to see. All that said, bullish day for the stock, stock today as it's breaking out from a long uh, base today. Been talking about Zillow. You know, Zillow, one of my favorite uh, IPOs. Uh, Zillow is, uh, is just an outstanding company. Um, Joe was asking me about the management team at United Therapeutics, which I don't know much about. But uh, Zillow's got a really sharp uh, CEO. He's uh, a Harvard grad. He was uh, part of the Hotwire team that was eventually sold to Expedia, I think. And he was an executive at Ex Expedia. He's now the uh, CEO of Zillow. Uh, Zillow making a nice uh, move today, up 6.4%. 6.4%. 4% to 4126 6 4126 uh, last uh, price on Zillow uh, not a lot of volume here though here we are we've got 15 minutes left to go in Thursday's session uh, volume of 408,000 shares it normally uh, normally trades about I want to say 600,000 I think it trades about 650,000 shares um, so you have a low volume breakout here. This one still could work. Fundamentals are uh, uh, outstanding. It's uh, expected to earn 28 cents a share this year compared to 10 cents in 2011. So that's uh, annual earnings growth of 180 uh, percent. Next year they're supposed to grow annual earnings by 132 percent to 65 cents a share. So uh, Zillow, of course, uh, provides online real estate data connects home buyers and, and sellers and uh, you know a very real growth story here big fan of uh, Zillow just tough buying low volume breakouts uh, you know when you're when you're buying a breakout you want to see juice behind the move you want to see signs that you know big investors are in there buying you're just not not seeing it so uh, gonna keep an eye on this one and uh, it still it still has its uh, prior high to contend with at uh, 4423 so it is breaking out from a handle area in a cup with handle pattern today but volume uh, is light and you know buying low volume breakouts frankly is uh, a little a little risky let's take a look at uh, AutoZone today AutoZone uh, making a big move today up 3.8 percent uh, $14.17 to 383.10 upbeat note from uh, Citigroup uh, talking about the fact that uh, June sales or sales um, was it sales in July a lot better than June I think it would sales in the current month uh, definitely an improvement from the uh, prior month that was the gist of the note from uh, from uh, Citigroup so we'll see if that uh, continues to um, 
help uh, shares of uh, AutoZone. Looks like what you have with uh, AutoZone is uh, possibly a, a double bottom uh, chart pattern taking uh, shape here. You've got uh, resistance at 391.90 uh, right here, but uh, you can see this pattern has the uh, appearance of a letter W, so not out of the question that AutoZone could eventually try to take out that 391.90 uh, price level. Um, not really looking at, uh, at this one too closely as a uh, buying opportunity, but uh, stock is acting um, very well uh, today. I want to take a look at some uh, financial uh, setups ahead of uh, earnings uh, tomorrow from J.P. Morgan Chase and uh, Wells Fargo. Let's take a look at uh, U.S. Bancor. What you have with U.S. Bancor is actually a nice little uh, cup with handle pattern taking shape. Uh, resistance at 32.60. Stock right now is down 16 cents to 32.12. So it's only only about 50 cents or so from a swing point here. Uh, possible that we could see a breakout in U.S. Bancorp, but again, you know, breakouts have had a very, very shaky track record because a lot of them have been happening in low volume, and um, you know, this is just something, something to pay attention to. Breakouts, you know, will at some point have their day in the sun. There's no question about it, uh, but they tend to work best when uh, there's volume behind uh, behind the breakout, and uh, that's just been a, a serious a missing ingredient in the market. Uh, up to this point. So U.S. Bancor in a nice uh, technical setup here. Take a look at some of the fertilizer stocks too. RNF. I remember somebody asked me about Rentech on the show uh, not too long ago. Rentech Nitrogen Partners. Again, that's RNF on the, um, I believe it's on the New York uh, Stock Exchange. Yeah, it came public in at $20 a share. $20 a share Rentech came public in November uh, 2011 last year. Uh, this is also a uh, cup with handle pattern uh, taking shape. So Rentech is another one to watch here. That uh, that could try to take out the 29.50 price level uh, shortly. It is uh, down one and a half percent today to 28.28, but still not far from a uh, swing point of 29.50. So uh, this is what I'm talking about. There are stocks uh, out there that you know could work. Uh, whether or not they do is just really going to depend on what this market does from here, and and that that's where it gets much uh, that's where it gets much much trickier because. You typically don't like to see the selling that we've seen in recent days so soon after that buy signal on June 29th, especially there's been some, some juice behind the downward uh, moves in the market. So things are definitely unsettled here. Very tricky environment for uh, growth stocks. Also in the group, uh, CF Industries, uh, selling pressure on this stock uh, today, but it is uh, still kind of in a handle area here where a breakout over $202 a share is not uh, out of the question. You can see the uh, the base started here in early May, came down, uh, corrected down to about 155 and has been working its way higher ever since. Recently climbed above $200 a share. Now you're seeing this little handle area form here. Last remaining sellers get shaken out of the stock, and uh, sometimes this can pave the way for uh, you know, a, a good a good upside uh, breakout. So watching CF Industries here, uh, swing point here is 202.33. Um, take a look at a, a small cap here named uh, Cardtronics. Uh, not a name that I've talked about uh, very much, but, you know, again, a stock showing relative price strength in the market. Uh, it is down 17 cents today to 30.53. They basically operate uh, uh, ATM networks. Um, not a, a fancy business, but a very well-run uh, company here uh, showing what relative price strength, holding above its 50-day um, moving average. Uh, what you have at Cardtronics, uh, not only a stock that's under accumulation, but also a stock that shows accelerating sales growth in uh, recent quarters from 11% to 21% to 29% to 38%. Anytime you see accelerating sales growth on a sequential basis, that's a sign of strong demand for uh, product and Cardtronics uh, definitely shows it. All right, folks, headed into the uh, final break. We'll uh, do a quick check on the markets uh, when we come back. And uh, we will be back in about four minutes. So stay tuned. Ken Shreve with you. Breakout Investing on TFNN.
and quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you gain access to each host charts and computer screen as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, Dave White, Larry Pesavento, or Victor Jones, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV yet, then visit TFNN.com today to see what you're missing. Would you like a personal update from Tom O'Brien as to what equities he's trading and what his daily trading plan is before the market opens each morning? Every market day, Tom O'Brien sends out his daily newsletter, Market insights to hundreds of subscribers that rely on his daily recommendations when it comes to navigating these highly volatile markets we're dealing with. As recently as May 21st, Market Insights subscribers closed out all five open positions for a combined profit of over 68% in one day. Profits ranged from 6.5% to over 24%, and all of these trades had been initiated within the previous 30 days. Now is the perfect time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's explosive trading newsletter, Market Insights, an $85 value. Tom breaks down the market each morning with his market take and provides trade recommendations including precise stops and target profit zones leaving nothing left to guessing log on to tfnn.com today and sign up for your two-week free trial make sure you're a subscriber the next time market insight subscribers close out multiple winning trades take action and sign up for your free trial today Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. Just like that, another month has passed and the Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway has come to an end. Each market day in June, one lucky winner was chosen to receive a one-ounce silver bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver and TFNN. We'd like to thank all the listeners that chose to participate, and if you weren't lucky enough to be a winner this time around, be on the lookout in the coming months for another opportunity to win a one-ounce silver bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver and TFNN. Thanks so much, and good trading. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator. Also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Welcome back to Breakout Investing. Uh, let's check in on the NASDAQ composite here as we head into the close. Um, looks like we could get distribution on the NASDAQ composite today. It is uh, off its highs a little bit, down 22 points, eight tenths of a percent to 28.66. At last check, volume was tracking just a little bit higher than what we saw on, uh, on Wednesday. If... Um, if it does end up being a higher volume decline, it would only um, uh, it would only be the uh, I believe the second 
higher volume decline for the Nasdaq uh, in recent days. So not uh, you know not not pronounced uh, distribution in the Nasdaq composite, but it looks like we could have one uh, taking uh, shape today. Let's check in on the uh, S and P 500. S and P 500 right now is uh, down half a percent. Uh, volume here. Uh, you're tracking higher than uh, than Wednesday. Uh, if we do uh, if we do see a, a distribution day here, this this would be, I believe, number three in a fairly short amount of time. So market, uh, you know, definitely sketchy here. I'm always, uh, as again, I reiterate the point. I'm a big believer in. You know, buying stocks when I believe the odds are in our favor to make money in stocks, and I don't believe we're in that type of environment right now. Uh, there's going to be stocks that uh, that tempt every day, um, but you know, a lot of these moves are in light volume, so you got to be uh, you got to be real careful. You got to be real discerning. You got to be real conservative. Uh, but the bottom line, recognize that we are uh, in a very shaky suspect uh, environment here. When there's not a lot of volume in the market, we can move hard one way or the other. Uh, easy to get whipsawed out of long positions, easy to get whipsawed out of short positions as well. Uh, so in that type of environment, I generally just like to not do a whole lot. Just kind of build up my watch list saying, identify the stocks that I believe have the best potential to lead when market conditions uh, improve. That's a perfectly sound and reasonable uh, game plan uh, at this point. So, uh, also wanted to check in uh, today on Watson Pharmaceuticals. This is another interesting uh, setup in the market here. Uh, really like Watson a lot. Good industry group. Uh, the stock is outperforming today, up eight tenths of a percent. You can see this is another bullish cup with handle pattern uh, taking shape. So, you can see there are chart patterns out there that are interesting. Whether or not they work, that's a big question mark. But you want to pay attention to these chart patterns uh, because if market conditions take a turn for the better, you know, a stock like Watson Pharmaceuticals could really uh, work here. Uh, looking for a breakout here, over 76 bucks a share. It's only about 75%, uh, 75 cents uh, from that uh, swing point. Again, here's your handle area for me here, watching Watson Pharmaceuticals for a breakout over 76. Question is, does volume expand at the breakout? That's really a key, uh, key part of um, of technical breakouts. Airline I've been uh, talking about in recent days. Let's check in on uh, Spirit. Spirit Airlines, that's ticker S-A-V-E. They do flights uh, to and from South Florida, the Northeast, Caribbean, Latin America. Uh, interesting setup here. Not quite ready yet, but I do like the stock's uh, relative uh, price strength amid uh, falling uh, gasoline prices, uh, lower oil prices. Uh, should be good for you know an airline uh, like this. And a lot of these retail stocks, retail stocks uh, showing relative uh, price strength in the market. Uh, Ross Stores, uh, super impressive here. Uh, Raw stores holding on to gains uh, nicely, outperforming today again, up 1.3 percent to 67.60. Uh, this is a, a very uh, interesting name as well. Uh, don't forget, folks, uh, economic data uh, tomorrow. We got the producer price index. Uh, like I said, overall prices expected to fall six tenths of a percent. Core rate up two tenths of a percent. We've also got earnings from J.P. Morgan Chase and Wells Fargo before the open. That's probably going to set the tone for what kind of day of trading we see on Friday. So. Hopefully we'll end the week on a positive note. Don't forget, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. Ooh, it's got an eerie feel to it. Thanks very much for tuning in, folks. Uh, Tom O'Brien's show coming up next from 4 to 6 Eastern. I'll be back tomorrow at 3 Eastern for another edition of Breakout Investing.